Welcome back to Word TV. Later on in the show, we'll give you some marketing plays of the week as well as an update on By the Numbers. But first, we have Robert Marsh, the CEO of EV1 Servers, in studio. He's here to give us a corporate update as to how EV1 is doing, especially after the devastation the hurricanes left south of the border. Robert, it's great to see you again. Well, thank you for having me. We're glad to be here. So to start off, why don't you just give us some company background? How did the company begin? Well, our business began uh, back in 1998 as a retail ISP. Uh, our business sort of took off and um, we uh, explored hosting uh, early on. Um, ironically enough, there was a show on Tech TV at the time, and I forget exactly who the on-air personality was, but they were profiling a Cobalt Cube. The little um, people these days may, you know, if you got into hosting recently, you may not have remembered it, but it was a little cube about like this. It was blue. It was really cute. And the claim to fame was that it was Linux for dummies in that it had this neat, pretty GUI that was easy to use. Um, and you just sort of plugged it in, put an IP address on it, and bam, anybody could host their own website. Or more importantly, from our perspective, we could be in the hosting business just instantaneously. It handled mail and HTTP and FTP and everything that anybody would need all in one easy to use appliance but more importantly in one easy to use control panel um, and so we started selling hosting we, we, get, we got this in not to get ahead of myself and uh, my partner and uh, our CTO said nope that's Linux that's garbage we're not gonna have it no way no how so I bought one anyway and uh, I got it I plugged it in I put an IP address I put up a website and I sent him an email through the box to, to tell him all about it he was like Okay, maybe this thing isn't so bad. And so we began to buy these things, onesie, twosies, and we started selling hosting in addition to our dial-up uh, ISP. Um, and there was a, a point where our, our sales at, at, for hosting were very brisk, but we didn't like hosting. It was a distraction from what our business to us was at the time, which was our dial-up business. Um, so we, at various points, shut down our offering of hosting. We just weren't going to, to offer it until we had more people and more time and more space. And um, every time that we would, we would go back and start selling hosting again, the, the response would be so large that we'd shut it down again. Um, and we began to realize that, that there may actually be a business in this hosting thing that, that we really didn't think that we could make a business out of. And so it was in uh, late 2000 that we actually cut a deal with Cobalt. They sent us an 18-wheeler load of these uh, servers, around 1,500 uh, of them. We had never sold a dedicated server before. We bought this truckload of servers, and um, they helped us uh, design the initial uh, automated provisioning system uh, that was the basis for the automation that exists today in our business. Interesting. Now, we saw you at ISPCon, great booth by the way, and you were also one of the panelists for the keynote about how to become an Uber host. EV1 was represented as the company that grew through organic growth. Can you tell me a bit about that and how that's worked out for EV1? You know, we've always um, believed that we're a sales and marketing company. Um, I'm an entrepreneur uh, at heart. We have a technical partner in the business. We have a financial partner in the business. Um, but, but by and large, our, our company is a sales and marketing organization. It just so happens that through our, our, our key managers and our key personnel that we have great talent, whether it's from the technical resources, from the development resources, from the customer service resources, from the technical support resources, or the data center resources. Those are all great resources that we have. But where, where our company has excelled in addition to the uh, to the automation perspective is from a sales and marketing perspective and so because we we do have those sales and marketing skills we've been able to grow our business organically as opposed to through um, you know acquiring companies and, and acquisitions uh, you can look at what were some fairly large companies in, in our industry greater than a hundred million dollars a year in revenue um, that have essentially fallen apart because uh, their roll-ups in this space um, you know didn't work. They weren't able to achieve synergies between the businesses. They weren't able to achieve integration. And so our focus has always been on a build rather than buy philosophy. Excellent. In light of Hurricane Wilma, I'd like to talk a bit about how EV1 deals with natural disasters. We know that Hurricane Rita wasn't as devastating as some expected, but how did EV1's facilities handle the storm? Were your preparations useful? Absolutely. Anytime you, you can go through a, a drill, whether or not you had the storm give you a, a direct hit or not, I think uh, a real-world drill is, is very important. And we got a real-world drill in terms of 
the freeways being clogged. And I'm not talking about your average uh, everyday traffic jam. I'm talking about you know somebody being on the on the road for 36 hours trying to go 150 miles. I mean, we're talking about devastation. The uh, trying to escape the fury of a of a storm. Um, we did a lot of things in in that preparation that were uh, came directly out of our disaster recovery plan um, or disaster preparation plan and those plans aren't simply from a physical or a personnel perspective um, a lot of companies in our business are, are not prepared for uh, a major tragedy uh, our plan is Im implemented even included uh, financial preparations uh, during the uh, during the storm, simple things of having $100,000 in, in actual green cash uh, available to make uh, emergency uh, purposes, drawing down available lines of credit to ensure that there's uh, cash available uh, post-storm in case our banks aren't uh, operating uh, uh, normally and these kinds of uh, things. From a physical perspective, ensuring that our generators were uh, all um, serviced uh, right before the uh, storm to ensure that we had the maximum runtime. Uh, available, ensuring that additional preparations were made in the buildings, removing anything that might become airborne, not only on our roofs, but around our uh, uh, facilities, ensuring that we had even an extra backup generator uh, brought in on a trailer in case one of our uh, generators was to, to fail, uh, flying out on a chartered plane, uh, uh, eight of our employees uh, to an alternate uh, location to handle support tickets. Um, disaster preparation is certainly more than you know, just putting a board up uh, across a window. Um, it's, it's very detailed for a large and uh, complicated infrastructure that we have. You had said you were trying to get back to Houston to ride out the storm with your employees. How did that go? From a perspective of having been a part in building that business, um, all of our key people all wanted to be there. Um, and their dedication to to, to seeing us not only survive but thrive during that period. Uh, we sold new servers completely throughout that uh, period. Our new sales were, were not uh, interrupted. Our customers worked with us incredibly well. Um, they responded well when we asked them to not submit non-emergency tickets. Uh, so it ensured that customers who had the most serious problems we were able to attend to, we were able to attend to them in a very timely basis. Um, so it was it was good to be back in Houston. Nobody ever wants to be in the direct eye of a storm, but it's the place to be. If I've asked my employees um, to to be a part in in weathering the storm, then it's pretty important for me to be right there with them. Very interesting. Well, looking forward, what kinds of new products and services can we expect to see from EV1 in the coming months? You know, our business over the last couple of years has been focused on delivering control to the end user client. Uh, we live in a unmanaged or self-managed uh, uh, server environment, and by and large our customers uh, want to be able to handle their own needs from a technical basis. Um, over the last year, you've seen us do a complete retrofit to offer remote reboot, uh, remote console where folks can get into the serial port of their uh, uh, Linux servers where they can hit a button and automatically reboot their servers without a human being uh, involved. Uh, we also added an automated security scanning service. We added the ability for our customers um, to automatically reload the operating system on their uh, servers. We had the ability for them to automatically add a different control panel um, to their uh, servers. And so our, as, we, as we go forward in the, in the coming months and coming years, the products and services that we push to our customers will be automation driven, but they'll also be client control driven, delivering more control to a central user interface for our customers so that they have more control over their hosting environment and they're not uh, relying upon waiting for a technician who can then go and service and help them with their server. Most of our customers have the ability to solve their own problems if only they had the access and the control. And so we've spent now about $8 million on remote console, remote reboot, automated reprovisioning, and the infrastructure to support those services. But the, the proof in the pudding that that's what our customers are, are wanting is the fact that probably 65% of our new sales are coming from our existing customers who are able to leverage that, uh, that technology. Uh, from a new products perspective, uh, we're excited to see uh, 
uh, the new sort of data, which is which is voice. Uh, consumer acceptance of VoIP as a uh, primary um, uh, telephone is, is is snowballing as as we, as we very speak. The numbers are increasing every single week, uh, and so we've purchased a, 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 a soft switch. Uh, we've had that installed. We have uh, a couple of hundred customers under a beta test at the at the present time, and so we see the <clears throat> opportunity for our hosting. Uh, resellers for our content companies that work with us to have the ability to leverage voice as the new data in their business so to provide an additional diversified revenue stream. Excellent. Thanks for coming into the studio to talk to us, Robert. Fantastic. Am I out of jail now? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, you're free to go. Thanks for coming in. See what's inside the current issue of War Magazine. In the shadow of the big brands, Hosting in the voice over IP landscape, plus more. Go to word.com slash magazine for more info.